Hey guys, welcome to my office. This is David. Um, it's actually just a room full of, you know, dogs and, and cats and a hedgehog right there. So, uh, I got a couple of cool Volvo things on the wall. You know, there's like uh, a couple of posters, whatever. So it's not about my room. Today I'm gonna be telling you about lubing up the panoramic sunroof on the BMW 5 Series. There are two panels and I'm gonna try to make it kind of to the point. I don't like long-winded videos and I know I have a habit of doing that, but sometimes it's fun, you know? The, uh, the quick and dirty way I'll show you first, which is just spraying down the rails and re-lubing them. Mm, doesn't really do a lot and uh, the second method is really involved and I only had to do that because I messed up on something by trying uh, to make some sort of in-between method of lubing up and only removing some stuff. So yeah, it's gonna be fun. Actually it wasn't fun. But now that I made all the mistakes, you don't have to. Pretty straightforward, right? Today we're going to lube up the sunroof. These panoramic sunroofs, they like to seize up on us. Really tricky. So, we're going to clean the old grease out of the rails here. You're going to see there's a nice drain way back in there, which actually drains under the car. And there's that old nasty grease. And then we're going to put some new white lithium grease, which is uh, what BMW recommends. Thank you, Will. Okay, I found a way to lube up the sunroof pretty effectively. There's a cover here, and that one has the uh, cable going through it. So this cable, uh, it's got like a felt or something in inside of it. You can lube up the rails all you want, but it was still clicking, so you can see it over here on this side. Cover's still on. I removed it, and if you move the sunroof to the closed position, the cable will stay tight. If you try to get it to open, the cable will pop out at you. So the best thing to do is to have it all the way open and then close it a little bit at a time, clean it, and lube it. That's what I've been doing, using the white lithium WD-40 mix. Oh, this is a groan of frustration. <laughs> I fudged up the alignment by removing one side and then operating the sunroof and, and it threw off the cables and it was just, uh, and I kept trying and trying and trying. Eventually I figured out how to fix it. I'm just making this up as I go along. Oh, isn't it glorious? <laughs> hey, my voice isn't meant to go that high. So I thought I fixed the sunroof. Um, the alignment is still off. This is as far as it will close and it's still just slightly crooked. So, uh, wow, it's been raining. It's really nice. Uh, look at that. Look at that. Oh, I love it. Oh, that's lovely. So couple of uh, easy ways. Now the rear, the rear panel has its own cables. The cables, uh, you know, they run over there into the motor and the other one crisscrosses, right? And this one, it's reached the full stop. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna manually shut the roof, disconnect the motor. There is a, an Allen key that you can use inside of there and then a little panel where the switch is. And then I'm going to um, put the roof where I want it, and then put the motor, I'm gonna run it to go full open and then all the way to full stop. That way it's sort of, um, I didn't know that the motor has like a timeout sequence or like a, a, a length of cable that it passes through it before moving on. So, I need some tools, but essentially I'll show you that panel again, right there uh, at the top. And uh, we'll go from there, cheers. With this cover popped off, you know, just be careful of the plastic here, be mindful. Um, we're going to take a screwdriver to this guy, pop that off, and then this whole piece that it sort of screws into will come down, and then we'll be able to put an Allen key. Now, if you still have the original toolkit, it will come with that Allen key. Um, I'm just gonna pop that off, and then you'll be able to twist that to the desired position. For the three screws that hold this motor in place, you've got the bottom one here, the middle one, which is the longer of the three, and the third one is right there underneath this guy. Once again, this is the longer screw of the three. So just keep in mind where that goes. All right, there's the motor pulled out. You're gonna notice that one of the screws are longer 
Now that that's pulled out, you see the cables underneath, nice and dirty, focus please. And the sunroof, the manual function of it, it's still, it's still binding just the way I fudged it up, but essentially the uh, little Allen key fits in there, manually turns the gear. But my alignment issue is between the first and second cable. So I'm gonna set all my screws down and try to wiggle the sunroof into place. But I'll show you the reset for the uh, motor. This is all the way back. One. Two. Now we're gonna go all the way forward. Oh, that's the back one. Close the back one. I push up to get it to full close. Really good, everything's lined up on the headliner, and that should be my final resting position. Lovely. Wasn't this just open like a minute ago? It's my Barney Sanders sign, I made that myself, I'm proud of it. All right, I think we're all closed up now, so in theory, I should be able to connect it and it should work flawlessly. Nervous. Very nervous. Oh boy, that's just to make sure that all the I don't know if that's doing anything, but hopefully all the slack is out of those cables. All right, reassembly and test operation coming up. Okay, it still didn't want to open all the way, so I pulled the motor off, and I could see what it's doing is it pulls in the driver's side a little bit, and then it gets stuck and goes back. And, you know, you could force it open by assisting one side with your hand, but that's no fun. So what I've had to do is pull this off again. I'm going to push the passenger side forward, which I don't remember exactly which cable that will be. Let's see here. Let's try that. You won't find sunsets like this anywhere else. If the car was fixed, I'd be able to take it out. Great photos, great photos. Oh well. Getting close to the solution, but I'm having a really hard time figuring it out. Um, it basically starts pulling from that side, and then this side catches up, and that's where it binds. And I've tried, you know, pulling it real hard on one end, like making it so that they both start at the same time. And all that it's accomplished is it binds even more. So the only way I can get it is for it to have a lot of slop on that end, which is the end I accidentally undid last night. Ugh, my mistake. And this one um, does follow has some clicking to it. There are spots on the cable that are getting kind of flat from just years of clicking and grinding away. I'm not proud of that. And of course, I just inherited the car that way, so mm, inherited's not really the word. Bought the car that way, so we're gonna keep tinkering with it. I am basically taking this cut Q-tip and putting it in the hole where the cable would go, and that pushes out all the dirt, and then I grease it really nicely, and it's a lot of fun. Methinks I found the problem. Look at that shaft. Mm, shaft. Look at the uh, tube is pushed in a oh, little too far. There's a corner piece there, if I can illuminate, that has a perfect little spot for that lip to sit. You see right in there. Mm, yeah. Let's try pulling that out with some pliers and getting it lined up again, and then I'll stick the wire in and uh, give it a good cleaning. Okay, finally got proper alignment of the sunroof. Oh, it was tricky, but that uh, loose cable bit over there was really what was holding this up. There's still one spot where it's a little uh, dead, and it's kind of a flat spot, and I think that's because of the windings on that coil. A few of the places are kind of flat, just being worn out from the teeth skipping on it. Um, pretty hard to steel gear on that guy and the coil looks like a steel coil around that felt kind of a pipe washer bit. 
So we're gonna try the sunroof. I'm gonna show you the one spot where it sticks and hopefully it'll clear itself up. Fingers crossed, I put a lot of grease in there. Here we go, sunroof is open. Cool. Please don't get stuck. It's been making those sounds from the beginning. Cool, all the way open. Now, to close it, you're going to either push up in the middle, or if you push forward, it'll just open the back. So we'll just check that out now. Oh. Right there. Hey, it didn't get stuck. That's even better. Oh, there we go. Now the back's opening. Click and click. Click, click. Glad I don't have to mess with the rear. I'm just going to re-grease it. Cool. Now if I go and push up, it's going to close the back. If I was just to push back, it would only slide back to the front and then both would be in comfort mode. All right. Cool. We are all set. One more time. Let's just do the front. Man, I hate those sounds that make me so nervous. Don't stop, don't stop. Yes, we have it. All right, time to close. And up in the middle. These armrests are pretty comfy when they're not in the way. All these spots where I got my hand on it, I gotta shampoo the whole headliner now. Okay, so uh, I started by wrestling with it for hours and hours and I ended up just doing it right and finding the problem towards the end of the day. Um, not to make a long video out of a short problem, but you know, basically after all was said and done, it was still a little bit out of alignment. So the trick follows that you remove the screw. I put some vice grips on here. And that's why it looks a little mangled up here. And as you pull that out, you get your little whatever four millimeter Allen wrench, you stick it all the way in, wind it up so that this is in the closed position, but the top will still be flipped open. The top is open because you can't actually get it to come down without the support of the rear. So what you would do is you would basically program it to be, you would uh, push the, you'd run the motor and it would go a little bit like that, just a little bit of a turn. And then you push the button again and it would spin, 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 spin until it goes into full open mode for the front. And then you would push up on it to get it to go back to here. And from here you have to push this again for it to fold down the top. But what I would do is just come back to here and then connect this again. I hope that's not too confusing. Let me try to reiterate. Okay, so pretend that this is off of, that this is, they call this the clutch. Uh, pretend that the clutch is pulled out and I have no idea where my alignment's at and everything's just a little bit off. To reset it, I'm going to um, remove this and then I'm going to put this in full backup mode. So this gear will spin for X amount of seconds and then it will stop. Cool, and then I would basically pull it forward just once. It would close this up. And that's where I would stick the clutch back on once this stops. And then to test your alignment to make sure it's good, you just push up in the middle and it would go, see that little dirt line there? Right here, where it tucks in. That dirt line is your uh, perfect alignment spot. Woo, what a job. Oh, I'm so glad I don't have to do this again. I gotta grease up the rear though. That's, that's gonna be a bit tricky, but yeah, just lots and lots of grease. Let me show you where all of that grease is gonna run down. Right here, behind the front wheels, See there's a nice little puddle of grease on this side. The other side's considerably worse because I, I hit it hard over the last five to six days of me just spraying it. Yep. All that, it's gray and it's dirty and it's not supposed to be there. That's why it drains out of those drainage tubes from the top. On the rear, it's gonna drain uh, somewhere that is underneath the rear bumper, kind of in front of the rear bumper. So you won't be able to see it, but you do see it dripping down at the end. Keep those holes clear. You don't want them to clog up. Otherwise water will get in through your headliner. Still got a thousand cardboard boxes in the back here. All right, looking at the back rails, the front is uh, just lifted so it's out of the way, of course. 
you want to see. Oh, if you ever have to do manual operation of the rear, uh, it'll drop the back headliner, there's like a center bolt on it, and then you'll use the same Allen key. Same method, the only thing is you want to make sure that, that front piece is up, because they get in the way of each other. Cool. Inside of these tracks here, inside of these tracks you can see old, old grease. How do you know that's old grease? Well, look at it. Alright, cool. Um, yeah, I sprayed it recently with a little bit, but basically underneath that, you see where like the milk looking spots are? Right under that lip, there's the cable. And the cable acquires all the dirt and it carries it back and forth to and fro the motor, just like the rear. It's just a, sort of a mirror image on that backside. I'm not pulling this apart, it's been such a headache. So, I'm going to spray the cheap WD-40, just the conventional stuff, down in here. And I'm going to let it rinse out all the old crap. If I can get a good spot for you guys to see this. It's gonna rinse out all the old crap. Look at it turning black. Oh no, aren't you gonna get all this WD-40 inside of your car and your headliner's gonna be soaked in it? Not even, because these drains on the back are gonna take care of that. See that there in the corner? Doing its job. Put some cardboard under your car, some paper towels. Cardboard's a lot more absorbent when it comes to this stuff because it's about ready to fall on the floor. Very good. What I do now is I'm going to close the sunroof in the rear and open it, basically getting more of the old grease to show its ugly self. Keep on clearing out those rails, even trying to hit it while they're opening, while they're closing. Um, just being quick, running around the car a lot. If you have a helper, just have them open and close the rear while you do this. If you have two helpers, one can be on either side cleaning those rails out. Quick and dirty method of getting it. Of course, you don't get all the way to the motor and back. Man, this is a really big part of it here. Cool. And most people don't even do this. This is, this is just forgotten maintenance. They let it click and they say, oh, it still opens and closes. They don't get the problem. And then those cables break and then you're really in trouble. Although, I was dreading this... Um, if, if it broke, I was dreading the repair. So I'm glad that it's not terrible. It's just annoying. We'll just call it an annoying repair. And the maintenance... Yeah, I guess maintenance can be annoying too. Oh yeah, that's not cool. My car's getting diarrhea of the butt. That's where it's draining from. Look! Something's causing a problem. Let's investigate. Okay, so it's running up the back. Hi, Aslan. <gasps> Hi! Oh, you're adorable. Okay, you're little nub wags. So it's not draining very well. It is sort of running out the backside into the, into the hose. One way check valve not working. Not good. Not good. Much rust happening in this spot here. You see much? Oh, very much rust happening in these spots because of these problems. WD-40, very good. Very good. Much rust. This is an aside. Maybe stash cam knows. Why is my dashboard sweating brown? I'm using a nice, like, stain remover and it's sweating out. Probably the ink or uh, the, the dye, I mean, in the vinyl. It looks, it looked like the sun kind of made it turd brown color. It was really, really not romantic. Ashtray turned into a chapstick holder. Hashtag winning. Hashtag Harambe. Hashtag never forget. Thank you for watching. Garage is a mess. It's time to clean it right after I shampoo the headliner.